So last time uh, we have computed uh, the number of uh, microstate uh, for uh, an ideal gas. And uh, we have found this uh, result. Uh, the entropy, which is the k times the logarithm of the number of microstate, uh, is um, nk times log of v. Uh, plus uh, three half nk times log. Uh, well, let me write it in terms of the temperature. Log. Okay, where, where I've uh, uh, used uh, the, uh, the, the fact that the energy for uh, an ideal gas is equal to N, uh, 3 half uh, uh, nkt, okay, which we have derived. And I have expressed the, the entropy as a function of temperature, okay. Because then uh, we have analyzed this experiment where we have taken uh, two systems in equilibrium at uh, the same temperature and uh, with the number of particles N1 and B1, N2 and B2, but with the same density, okay? So, so in both cases, N1, uh, B, B1 is equal to N2, V2, okay? And then we have uh, uh, done uh, this, uh, this experiment uh, where uh, um, we have uh, removed uh, the wall uh, and then uh, we have uh, put the wall again and then uh, we have a different system, okay? Now, if uh, the molecules uh, of uh, the gas in system one and in system two are different, then uh, this is an irreversible transformation because uh, in this stage, uh, uh, the, particle, the particle will mix. And, uh, and when you put uh, back the, the, uh, uh, the wall between the two systems, you will have a different uh, macroscopic system, okay? And uh, uh, this is an irreversible transformation and then uh, the change in the entropy is just uh, 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 given by um, the change, change in the entropy between this system and this system. You see the temperature does not change, so this part uh, uh, will not change. And, um, uh, but what will change is that uh, uh, here you will have uh, the, uh, the entropy of the final system. The final system will have a uh, uh, total number of particles, which is N1 plus N2 log V1 plus V2. And the entropy of the initial system is uh, uh, N1 K log V1 minus N2 log K log V2. So uh, that you, you can write uh, uh, these as uh, N1 K log Uh, sorry, with a minus sign. Okay, so the entropy is positive. The change in entropy is positive. Okay. So, uh, and this is called the entropy of mixing. 
Now, however, is the, if uh, the two systems are uh, the same uh, uh, gas, uh, the same molecules, then uh, uh, effectively this change uh, is a reversible change because there is, uh, there is no way in which you can tell the difference between uh, this state uh, and this state. If the density is constant, uh, here there will be approximately n1 particles, the volume is v1, and here there will be approximately n2 particles and the volume is v2 because the densities are, are the same. Okay? So uh, then uh, this is a reversible change and uh, the delta s should be zero. Okay? So, how, uh, so this is uh, called the Gibbs paradox. Okay? So how to solve this paradox? Well, uh, the idea is that um, if you think about it, uh, uh, when you have uh, the same gas in uh, both uh, uh, these two systems, here uh, the number of uh, different configurations uh, which you can uh, get at this stage is one of uh, uh, n1 plus n2 choose n1, okay? So there are these many ways in which uh, uh, you can get, uh, uh, you can get a, a different arrangement of the particles in system one and system two. Is this right? Okay. This is the combinatorial uh, uh, factor, okay? Then, indeed, uh, the, uh, what this means uh, is that when I compute uh, the, the uh, number of uh, microstates uh, which uh, uh, describe uh, this system here, then uh, I should consider uh, the, pro the product uh, of, uh, of the two... Uh, of the number of microstates in system one and the number of microstates in system two. Yeah? No, if there is a, if the gas is different, the two parts, mm -hmm. then the final state is different. But if the gas is the same, then uh, the final state will be, this, uh, will be the same, right? Yes, so we are talking about one kind of gas. Yes, now we are talking about one kind of gas. Uh, and we are trying to understand uh, how, uh, how we can solve this paradox. Because if you use the formula, this formula here, uh, this, uh, uh, then, then uh, you would uh, just get uh, the entropy of mixing after this transformation, okay? And uh, so what I want to uh, argue is that uh, there are uh, this many number of uh, microstates which are uh, uh, consistent, uh, uh, which are equivalent, okay? Which are uh, equivalent with a system uh, where uh, these two states are in equilibrium, these two subsystems are in equilibrium at the same tens, uh, uh, temperature, at the same uh, uh, density. Okay, so indeed, when you uh, compute the uh, number of microstates of the whole system, you should consider uh, the product of uh, how, ma how many microstates can the system one be times how many, uh, the number of uh, uh, microstates in which the system two can be. And then you should multiply by this factor, okay? You should multiply by n divided by, I choose n1, okay? Where n is equal to n1 plus n2. Now, if you rewrite this, uh, this is n factorial times uh, omega 1 divided by n1 factorial times omega 2 divided by n2 factorial, all right? And now you see that uh, if I uh, define my uh, number of microstates of the total system 
as this one divided by n factorial, then this is the nice property that uh, it will be proportional uh, to omega 1 times n1 factorial. So it will be proportional to the same way of counting the states uh, of the microstate uh, for the system 1 and the system 2. Okay? So this sounds like a mathematical trick, but uh, it's actually uh, deeper than that. It is actually telling you that uh, uh, you cannot, uh, if the particles are indistinguishable, uh, if the particles are the same, you cannot distinguish between microstates uh, where uh, uh, particles are interchanged among themselves. Okay? You have to count uh, the number of particles, uh, I mean the number of microstates, uh, in such a way that uh, um, you, you are not distinguishing between different uh, uh, arrangement of the particles. Okay? And you see, if you have uh, this property, when you compute uh, the entropy, uh, the entropy of the total system will be just the entropy of the sum of the two systems. Okay? If you compute the, the entropy of the total system, this is k times uh, the log of this omega zero, and this will be just uh, uh, the, uh, the sum of the log of uh, omega tilde one and omega tilde two, which is the sum of the two entropies. So the change in the entropy in this case will, will be exactly equal to zero. Okay. So the change in the entropy when you go from uh, this state to this state will be equal to zero, as it should. Of course, if the two gas uh, are different, uh, this is not true. Okay. This is not true because the two. I mean, indeed, uh, uh, if the two gas are different, this uh, uh, number will depend on. Uh, uh, will depend on, on, on the number of particles uh, of type 1 and the number of particles of type 2 uh, separately. Okay? So I will not have this uh, n factorial. And indeed, uh, the correct number of uh, counting the states will be just uh, omega 1 divided by n1 factorial, omega 2 divided by n2 factorial. And I will have, uh, again, uh, the entropy of mixing. OK? Yes, please. Sorry? Yes, so if we use different particles, uh, we have uh, uh, an irreversible process. Okay? But if the particles are the same, and, and so if we use the, if here and here there are different particles, then this is a, an irreversible process. And we should have a, a, a positive change in the entropy. Okay? If instead uh, the particles are, the, are of the same type, is the same gas, then uh, this is a reversible process. And the change in the entropy should be zero. Okay? So this uh, formula here does not uh, uh, give you this result when the particles are the same, of the same type. Okay. The way to correct it uh, is to uh, count, uh, is to use a different way of counting uh, the number of microstates, uh, which is the number of uh, uh, microstates as we have computed divided by n factorial. Okay. Okay, so if you do this, uh, then uh, uh, the entropy as uh, an additional term um, a 
if you now define uh, uh, the entropy in this way, then there is an additional term which you have to add uh, to this formula, which is minus, uh, which is minus the log of uh, n factorial, right? Times k. Okay. And uh, so you see, this is uh, this is. Uh, uh, using Stirling approximation, this is n log n minus n. So this uh, minus k times n log n, I can put it uh, together with this. So I have n k times log v over n plus n k times uh, 5 over 2 plus 3 half log of 2 pi m 18 divided by h squared. Okay? So now you see that uh, <coughs> this entropy as a function of n, v, and t is uh, really an extensive quantity. Okay? Because if I change uh, uh, if I change uh, uh, n into a times n uh, and uh, v, morning, a times v, and uh, the temperature remains the same because it's an intensive quantity. Then uh, you see that uh, under this transformation, uh, v divided by n uh, remains v divided by n. Uh, Temperature does not change, uh, and you just get that this is, uh, you get that the entropy of uh, a system which is A times bigger is just equal to A times the entropy of the initial system. Okay? Are there questions? Is this clear? Okay. So, um, so why do we need to do this? Uh, um, to count the number of microstates uh, in this way. So we have seen that uh, when we count the number, of, we have to define the entropy as k times the log, the number of microstates as n, v, and e divided by n factorial. So why this n factorial? So this n factorial uh, actually comes because uh, uh, in classical mechanics uh, we uh, can actually, uh, when we solve uh, a mechanical system, uh, we describe the system with, uh, with the coordinates and the momenta, and we label each of uh, uh, the coordinates and the momenta by a label of the particle. So in classical mechanics, uh, we can think of following uh, each of the particles, uh, and uh, so we can think of labeling uh, each of the particles, okay? But in quantum mechanics, uh, uh, we cannot. You know that in quantum mechanics, uh, uh, the wave function must be either symmetric or anti-symmetric uh, with respect to an exchange of the particles. So we cannot uh, uh, put a label on the particles, okay? So this uh, uh, n factorial is, uh, is a way to, act, say, um, to um, uh, correct for uh, this uh, um, inadequacy of classical mechanics, okay? However, it's an approximate way. It's an approximate manner, okay? 
because indeed uh, uh, if you really have a, a, a quantum system, then in a quantum system uh, you will have uh, uh, energy levels And, uh, uh, and your system uh, will have uh, n uh, a particles uh, in uh, level a. And of course, you should have the, the sum of all the levels uh, of n a should be equal to n. Now, if uh, the particles are really <coughs> indistinguishable, it means uh, that not only uh, uh, I can uh, that uh, I cannot even distinguish uh, between states uh, where I interchange uh, any particle uh, uh, which is in the same state. Okay, so if I if I interchange, uh, uh, so not only I cannot. Uh, uh, so I have to. Uh, I mean, the number of uh, the correct number of counting the states. Uh, in the correct uh, number of counting the state, I should uh, divide by the number of ways in which I can uh, distribute uh, the particles uh, in, uh, in the states. Okay? So, indeed, uh, uh, in the correct uh, way of uh, uh, computing the number of particles, uh, instead of n factorial, you should uh, actually put uh, n the combinatorial fa the multinom uh, multinomial factor which counts the number of ways in which you can uh, uh, distribute uh, all the particles in uh, uh, in the energy uh, levels okay Now this, uh, we are going to discuss, uh, uh, we are going to discuss uh, uh, what will be the effect of this uh, uh, factor here in uh, later uh, uh, lectures. But let me just point out, uh, wh when do we expect, uh, uh, when do we expect that uh, this way of uh, uh, computing, uh, counting the states will be correct, okay? When is it that this, uh, 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 a recipe which is based on classical mechanics uh, will work, okay? And uh, essentially it will work uh, if um, as long as uh, the number of particles, uh, I mean this uh, Na factorial is essentially one, okay? So if you have that uh, this product of A of Na factorial is one, uh, which means uh, that n a factorial is essentially one, uh, and this means that uh, n a is either uh, zero or one, because you know that zero factorial is equal to zero, and one factorial is equal to one. Okay. Then, uh, uh, if uh, the occupation number uh, uh, is always less than one, then uh, uh, this way of counting the states uh, will, uh, will be approximately correct. And this will occur when uh, the expected number of uh, uh, the expected number of particles in each state uh, is much less than one. So when when does uh, this occurs in a real in a, in an ideal gas? Okay, so let's uh, try to understand what are the physical conditions uh, under which uh, this uh, this thing uh, occurs. Yep. There, there is no particle in that state. So yes. So the, the, uh, when, when we have computed this number here, yeah. you remember we have uh, uh, 
computed uh, uh, all the uh, possible states. We have to compute all the possible states uh, uh, in which we can distribute uh, n particles uh, in these states. Okay? You remember our states, uh, we did this plot uh, where we had this uh, vector uh, n, say, of the occupation number of the states. Uh, and uh, what we said is that uh, the, uh, the possible states are all those. So this is a, uh, is a very high dimensional uh, space. So it has three n dimensions. Okay. So and all the points on this surface is a possible uh, is a possible uh, uh, state of our system. Okay. Yeah. Yes. A represents uh, yes the 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 um, um, yes. In uh, in our case, uh, you have a collection number uh, quantum numbers. Okay. So uh, and uh, but for any set of this collection of quantum number, you will have an, a number of particles with, that, uh, uh, with those quantum numbers. Okay? And, um, and what we are saying is that uh, the, number, uh, um, the number of particles in each quantum state should be small. Large n is the number of particles. And NA is the number of particles in state in level A. Okay, because I'm considering a, a, an ideal gas. Okay, so particles are uh, independent. So the energy is the sum of the energies. And the way I construct uh, uh, a, a state of the system is just by putting different particles on different uh, 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 single particle uh, uh, states. Uh, so, uh, and uh, each uh, particle, uh, uh, each, part, uh, each particle can, can be in uh, um, uh, in a different state. Okay. Yeah. No, no, yes, that, that is exactly the point. Okay, so uh, the, this uh, formula here will uh, occur when uh, uh, the, uh, the occupation number of uh, the uh, states of our system is typically very small. Okay, so when, uh, when the number of particles in each energy level is very, very small, okay? Hmm? So th this will be, uh, uh, so uh, in each microstate, uh, uh, this, will, this will be uh, a different number, okay? If you take, uh, um, for each microstate, uh, you will have uh, a different uh, uh, set of these numbers, okay? So you can think of, uh, uh, Boxes, okay, so the boxes are uh, the le energy levels, and, uh, and then you have to distribute the particles, okay. So the boxes are the energy levels, and, uh, and each, each of these box is a, as a label A, is an energy level and it has its energy. And then uh, uh, there will be uh, uh, a number of particles uh, uh, in each of these uh, uh, energy levels. So this will have uh, Na equal to 1, 1, 0, 1, etc., etc. Okay? Okay? 
So, um, now, um, For a certain gas uh, at a certain uh, energy E or a certain temperature T uh, with a certain density, so how many particles uh, will be will I find in each of these energy levels? So uh, in order to compute this, uh, one way to compute this is to say, well, this uh, uh, the number of uh, states. Uh, I have to compute how many boxes will I have and uh, divide uh, if I want to know, uh, if I want to compute this number here, this will be the number of particles divided by uh, the number of boxes. Okay. The number of boxes is the number of accessible energy level at a certain energy E. Okay, or let's say at, at a certain uh, uh, energy um, uh, uh, or below a certain energy E. Okay. So how many uh, are the boxes? So, so we see that uh, um, essentially the uh, total number of uh, states, uh, uh, the total number of uh, single particle states uh, is essentially all those uh, um, um, so the um, So the uh, the number of states are all those which are uh, inside uh, typically uh, uh, a, a sphere of radius two uh, m v to the two thirds times the energy E divided by h. Okay. So uh, the total number of uh, oh, so the total number of uh, of of states uh, will be uh, essentially this uh, for a sing for for a particle will be the cube of this okay an estimate of this uh, will be essentially r cube. Okay, which is uh, proportional to uh, uh, V uh, divided by H cube times uh, uh, E uh, to the uh, um, to the three half. So it's essentially proportional to volume times temperature to the power three over two. Okay. So you see that uh, uh, the average uh, uh, occupation number will be proportional to n divided by v times t to the three half. So when the density, so the classical, uh, uh, this means uh, that uh, this condition uh, will be uh, fulfilled when the density is very, very small or when the temperature is very, very high. Okay, so classical, uh, uh, the classical way of uh, counting the states, uh, which is given by this formula here, will, uh, 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 will uh, be correct for low densities and high temperatures. 
Whereas if you are uh, at, uh, if you go to low temperatures and uh, if you go to high densities, you will start seeing uh, uh, quantum effects. You will start seeing uh, effects which are related to the fact that you are not counting properly the number of states. Okay? And uh, we are going to discuss uh, uh, this. But uh, so this is just to give you a sense of uh, the fact that uh, this uh, classical statistical mechanics typically for, uh, for ideal gases holds for low densities and high temperatures. Okay? Okay, um, if there are no, no questions, then uh, we change subject. Questions? Yeah? When we have high temperature, you should think that uh, this uh, sphere gets uh, larger and larger. So the number of points which are on the sphere also increases very much. Okay, and then uh, uh, because the the temperature is the energy is proportional to the temperature. Okay, so uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yes, so. You need uh, uh, the radius of the sphere increases with the energy and with the volume, right? So that uh, the, the larger is the volume, at fixed then, the larger is the volume and the larger is the energy, and the, the lower is the occupation number of each uh, quantum state. No? Okay. Okay, so what I would like to do uh, now is to, so what we have said is that uh, uh, we derive uh, um, thermodynamics by make, uh, establishing a correspondence between a macro state, which is specified in terms of, uh, for example, macroscopic variables, and a uh, uh, micro state. And uh, <clears throat> now I would like to make uh, this connection uh, more uh, precise. Uh, more precise, in particular, uh, uh, more precise and more, uh, uh, more general. And the way to make uh, this connection uh, more uh, precise is to uh, introduce the concept uh, of uh, ensembles. Okay, in order to introduce this concept, uh, so uh, let me, uh, let us focus on classical systems, okay? We have a classical system, so there is an Hamiltonian, so the microstate uh, will correspond uh, uh, to a, a collection of coordinates, and a collection of uh, momenta. So there are uh, three coordinates and three momenta for each particle, so there are uh, six n uh, coordinates. Three n uh, uh, coordinates and three n momenta, okay? And I will call uh, uh, these just uh, Q and P for the simplicity. Now, it is uh, very useful to think uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, micro, so microstate will be uh, essentially specification of, uh, uh, of all these uh, numbers. 
And it's very useful to think about uh, um, this as a point in a space, okay? And this space is called the phase space. And it's the space of all coordinates and momenta, okay? So this is a six n dimensional space. And each, each point uh, in this space uh, is a complete specification, microscopic uh, specification of a classical system. Okay? Okay, so each microstate uh, you can think of, uh, well, uh, we, we would like uh, uh, to associate uh, um, microstates with. Uh, uh, points in this space, okay? Now, what do these points do? As time goes on, they move, okay? They will follow a certain trajectory. And this trajectory, uh, at each point, uh, will have a certain uh, velocity, which is uh, uh, given by Q dot, and uh, p dot, okay? The time derivative of uh, coordinates and the time derivative of moment. And uh, what are those th two things? Uh, so q dot uh, is um, uh, d h d p and uh, p dot is minus d h d q. Is that, uh, so the velocity in uh, phase space is given by, uh, so this, this is true for each uh, each of the coordinates, right? Okay. So this, this gives you uh, the dynamics of, uh, of, uh, of the system. Now, uh, what is the idea? Imagine that you want to do an experiment. You want to measure something, okay? You have a function, and what you want to measure will be a function of, uh, in general, coordinates and momenta, okay? For example, you want to measure the energy. The energy will be a function of coordinates and momenta, or the, uh, I don't know, some uh, other... Uh, uh, physical quantity. Then the measure of this, uh, uh, if you do an experiment, you should think uh, that uh, uh, you will uh, uh, essentially uh, probe your system uh, for a certain time. And what you actually uh, can think you would measure in your uh, experimental uh, apparatus is uh, some sort of uh, time average of uh, uh, of this quantity as uh, the system moves uh, uh, in phase space okay So you, you could also think, uh, uh, I mean, if you do a certain uh, uh, number of um, uh, measurement, you could also think uh, of doing different measurement at different times and taking the average, okay? So this, this will be sort of uh, something like this. Okay, if you want, uh, if, uh, of course, we could think of computing uh, uh, this... Uh, value by solving uh, all these equations uh, and, uh, and making this integral. But it is clearly hopeless because, uh, not only because we have to solve uh, uh, a very large number of uh, differential equations, but also because uh, we don't know the initial conditions. Okay, so uh, it is uh, really hopeless. 
So uh, another idea is that of uh, instead uh, using the concept of uh, ensembles, so that uh, as the system moves around in phase space, it uh, uh, visits uh, many points. And uh, all these points, uh, um, now you can think of uh, uh, taking instead of, uh, and essentially what you want to do is to um, make averages over all these points, okay? So now what you can think of doing is to say, well, uh, let's, uh, let us take uh, a very large number of copies of the system that will be in different points uh, of, uh, of the space. And each of them will have uh, its own dynamics. OK? So you, you imagine like uh, 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 instead of following just one system, you imagine uh, uh, having a, a very, very large number of identical system and uh, which move according to these uh, equations. They will uh, generally be uh, systems with uh, different initial conditions. And, um, and so what you can think of, uh, uh, and this is the concept of ensemble, okay? So an ensemble is a, is a collection of uh, uh, many, many points in the phase space, okay? Now, in order to be uh, more uh, precise, uh, you want to define uh, how many, uh, so for any, uh, for any volume, typically this phase space is called uh, gamma. For any uh, volume uh, uh, in uh, gamma around uh, a particular point uh, Q and P, which is uh, uh, given by, uh, uh, yes, which is uh, given by a small neighborhood. Uh, you take a particular point uh, Q P of this thing of uh, where uh, of volume uh, dQ times dP. So you want to have uh, in your ensemble a number of uh, points uh, uh, in each uh, infinitesimal volume, which is essentially proportional uh, to the frequency with which uh, the system will pass in that volume, okay? So you want to uh, uh, define this object as uh, uh, 1 over t times the limit uh, as the time goes to infinity of uh, the, so 1 over t should be here, of, uh, let me call this, this is the, the, the time spent, uh, so the, uh, the time spent uh, in, uh, delta gamma uh, by the system. So imagine that uh, I can follow my system in phase space uh, and I can uh, compute uh, how much time uh, in a long time interval t, how, how much time does it spend of this long time interval t, how much time does it spend uh, in this uh, particular volume, okay? Then I compute, I can compute this limit. And generally this limit uh, will be proportional uh, to uh, the, the size of the volume, okay? So I define through this limit an object uh, which is uh, which is the density, okay?
Okay, so the, the, uh, the idea is if I can think of uh, uh, a distribution of points such that the density of these points is such that uh, it is equal to the frequency around each uh, uh, point in phase space is equal to the frequency with which my system passes uh, close to that point. Then uh, you see that uh, uh, by using, uh, uh, I can turn uh, all this uh, time average in, uh, uh, in averages over uh, this density. Okay. By definition, it will be uh, by the definition of how I define this uh, this uh, density. Uh, I can turn uh, time averages into averages over this density. Okay, and essentially this will be exact uh, if I take the limit uh, t going to infinity. Okay, if I sorry. Yes, this, uh, uh, this will be normalized, right? Because the total time spent in all the phase space will be equal to T. Okay, so this will have, uh, as you say, right, as you point out, uh, rightly, this, uh, this should have the, the property that uh, the integral on uh, all the phase space, uh, rho of Q and P, should be equal to 1. Okay? This is uh, the integral over all the phase space. So this is a three n dimensional integral and another three n dimensional integral, right? Okay. And this is a function which depends on six n uh, on all these coordinates. Okay. So uh, this idea of uh, 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 ensembles is. Uh, It's just a trick which I use uh, to turn uh, time averages uh, into uh, uh, averages over this density. So now my problem is no more, uh, I don't need to integrate all these uh, equation of motions, provided I can compute this, uh, this density here, okay? Still, this is a very complicated uh, problem because this is a function of uh, six n variables. Okay. Uh, very good. So this is a small volume uh, in the phase space. So, uh, is the number of uh, sorry? Is, uh, so this is a uh, uh, the. Um, fraction of points of my ensemble, let me write, this is the fraction of points of the ensemble in the volume dq dp, okay? So I'm uh, taking uh, this uh, small volume in the phase space and, I'm, and uh, I want uh, that in my ensemble there is a fraction of point uh, in this, uh, in each uh, volume which is equal to the uh, uh, fraction of time that my system passes through that uh, volume, okay? Because if, uh, if I define uh, uh, the, my ensemble in this way, then uh, I can compute averages in this way. Okay? Very good. Yeah. 
Sorry? Yes, this is going to be uh, this is going to be the probability density that uh, to find the system in this uh, uh, microstate. Okay, you know we are we are going to see that uh, in order to define microstate, uh, uh, we need uh, we cannot really uh, think of uh, points as microstate. Uh, we'll have to think about small volumes as Corresponding to a microstate. But I'll come to that. Okay. Okay, so uh, now let us consider a, a particular system, a particular system, uh, in particular an isolated system. An isolated system will have an energy which is uh, constant, is a constant of the motion. And uh, uh, so since the energy um, is uh, um, so since the energy is constant, then uh, um, the part of the volume uh, which is uh, visited by the system uh, will be finite. Uh, the, 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 the region uh, of uh, the system which is uh, visited by the uh, of the phase space which is visited by the system will be finite. Okay. Because uh, uh, the momenta uh, cannot go to infinity, I mean, because the, the uh, Hamiltonian generally will be, um, well, it's p squared over 2m, so it's an increasing function of p. So uh, if uh, the energy is bounded, then momenta should be bounded. And also the, the coordinates uh, will be um, uh, constrained in a given volume, okay? So uh, if I'm studying a system of particles in a volume V, then each of the Q, uh, each of the coordinates uh, Q will be uh, in, a, in, a, in, in that volume, okay? So uh, this means that um, this integral for all practical purposes will be on a finite uh, portion of the phase space. And in particular, this portion of the phase space will be the surface where uh, the, this, uh, the energy is constant, okay? For, uh, for an isolated system, the uh, surface uh, uh, of constant energy, where the Hamiltonian is constant, will define uh, the part of the phase space which is visited. Okay, so um, well, notice also that uh, uh, so if uh, uh, so if the system is uh, subject to uh, an external force, so if there is an external field which varies in time, then uh, uh, also the uh, the energy will change in time. And as a, a result of this, uh, also the, the density will also depend in time. So uh, this thing will be different from zero if, uh, 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 if uh, there, is a, there is a time dependent Uh, say force acting on the system, okay? But if there is no time dependent force acting to the system, then uh, uh, just the system will have uh, its own energy and uh, it will just uh, move on, uh, on points of the same uh, energy. And what we want to do now is to uh, study this motion. Okay, quite in general. Okay, so um, so let us consider a small volume, and uh, let's say 
there, are, uh, there is a fraction delta gamma of uh, uh, points of my ensemble in this volume. So how will this uh, number change in time? Well, the, uh, the change in time of this delta gamma will be essentially the change in time of uh, um, uh, of the density, right? Q, P, and T. And I'm allowing also for uh, time dependence. And, uh, and this integral should be on, uh, on the volume, uh, uh, let me call it uh, uh, the Q. On this, uh, say, small volume uh, uh, let me call it delta omega. I call delta omega uh, this, uh, this volume of uh, phase space, uh, and delta gamma is the uh, fraction of points of my ensemble which are in this uh, phase space. So this, uh, this is just uh, uh, how uh, the, I mean the, the uh, number of um, points of my ensemble will change uh, in time, the definition. And uh, why uh, uh, will they change in time? Because some, uh, uh, some point uh, which is inside this volume will go out, uh, and some point which is outside this volume will go in, OK? Because all these points uh, are moving with a certain uh, velocity v, uh, uh, which is equal to uh, this, OK? So the change uh, uh, in this uh, uh, um, well it can be used uh, can be computed by taking an integral over all uh, uh, the boundary of this uh, region delta omega over the, the surface uh, and calling sigma the surface of uh, uh, of this volume. Yeah? Is it uh, the rate of change of P gamma or Q omega? Q omega? So, the, the, uh, so this is the volume, yeah. okay? Uh, the region in phase space. And this is the uh, fraction of points in this uh, phase space uh, of the ensemble, the fraction of systems. So this is, uh, uh, so if I take this density and I integrate over the, the omega, then you get the fraction of uh, points of the ensemble in uh, this uh, volume here, right? And I'm interested in, how, in the change of this, okay? Now I'll say uh, this number will change because uh, uh, some of uh, the points which are inside go out. And some of the points which are uh, in, uh, um, which are outside, uh, go in. Okay. And uh, <coughs> in order to compute this thing, I have to compute uh, how many points are on uh, sigma, and uh, and uh, and the rate at which they, they are going to go out is proportional to the product between the normal to sigma and the velocity. Okay. So. This will be uh, the integral over the sigma times on the surface times the density on the surface times uh, the normal velocity uh, the, uh, n times uh, the velocity, okay? And, uh, and this velocity is, uh, is just uh, q dot and p dot which is given by that. And of course, uh, say, uh, you see, uh, when the, dense, when the n, uh, uh, 
when the velocity has a positive component on the normal, then uh, the points will go out. And uh, when uh, the velocity and the normal are uh, on opposite direction, the, there will be an increase in the number of points. So there is a minus sign here. Okay. And I can use uh, 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 Gauss theorem to evaluate this. This will be equal to the uh, integral on the volume of uh, d q d p times the divergence of rho times the velocity. So if I uh, compare these two equations, what I see is that uh, the, the dynamics, uh, I mean, how this, uh, um, how the density changes in time has to satisfy the continuity equation, which is the rho dt is equal to or plus the divergence of rho times b should be equal to zero, okay? And this is just a statement that uh, uh, in my ensemble, no point is created and no point is uh, destroyed, okay? I'm just following a number of points uh, as they move uh, uh, in this space, but I'm not uh, destroying any point and I'm not creating any point, okay? So for any uh, small volume, the change in the number of points inside the volume is just given by those who enter and exit, okay? And this is uh, the continuity equation. So what is uh, the divergence of, uh, what is this divergence uh, here? So this divergence is uh, a divergence uh, of uh, computed over all the coordinates. Right? So if I write it uh, uh, explicitly, this is uh, the sum from i equal 1 to 3n of the derivative with respect to uh, qi of uh, rho times uh, the component uh, of the velocity on uh, qi, which is qi dot plus the derivative with respect to pi of rho times uh, p dot i. Okay? Now, let us do this uh, uh, derivative. This is sum i from 1 to 3n. of d rho uh, d qi times q dot i plus d rho d uh, p i q dot uh, p dot i and then I have uh, uh, rho which multiplies d q dot dqi plus d p dot i dpi. Okay? So what are these two terms? So this term here is just, uh, um, uh, you see, is the change, is the change in rho as uh, you move uh, uh, on the trajectory, okay? So it's just, uh, 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 it's just the total derivative of rho with respect to the t, of rho computed in uh, q of t, p of t, and t, if you want, minus the derivative of rho with respect to t. Okay, so if you want to compute the total derivative of a rho as a function of t, what you have to do is to, to take uh, the partial derivative of rho with respect to coordinates and then the time derivative of the coordinates, right? 
and then the explicit derivative of, uh, of uh, over time, the partial derivative over time. So, so this part here is exactly equal to this. Okay. And what is this part here? Well, uh, uh, here you notice that dq dot i, dpi, dqi, is equal uh, to the second derivative of uh, the Hamiltonian, right? And uh, dpi dot dpi is equal to uh, also minus the second derivative. Okay. So if the Hamiltonian is a analytic function of uh, the coordinates and uh, uh, these two derivatives are the same, so this term is exactly equal to zero. Okay. So you see uh, that uh, now if you plug uh, this result uh, here, uh, what uh, you get is a quite uh, important uh, result, uh, which is known as uh, Deuville theorem. which states that uh, the total derivative of uh, the density uh, over, uh, uh, over the trajectories, the total derivative of the density uh, with respect to time is equal to zero. So if you uh, sit on a particular system and you follow the trajectory, you will see that on the trajectory, the density does not change. Okay? So this is uh, very, very important uh, because uh, what it tells you is that uh, rho is a constant of the motion. Rho is a constant of motion. Okay, so if this is so, then uh, uh, you can think uh, that uh, rho must be a function of the constant of the motion, okay? And uh, in this case, uh, uh, essentially, uh, it tells you that uh, in particular, if the constant of the motion is uh, just the energy, then rho must be a function of the energy. Okay. Now you see that this is very, very important. It's very, very important because uh, we have done the problem of uh, determining uh, a function of uh, 6n uh, variables into the problem of uh, just uh, finding uh, a function of one variable, okay? Which is the, how does this thing depends on, on the energy, okay? And this is uh, really uh, a big, big step. The, the other thing uh, which you get from uh, this uh, Liouville theorem is that um, if you look uh, you remember we had this hypothesis of uh, a priori uh, equiprobability of microstates. This essentially says, tells you that all the states which are visited by the dynamics are equiprobable. So the probability is the same. Okay? So uh, this, is, uh, this is very important because it gives you some, uh, some uh, um, foundation for this uh, a priori equiprobability of microstates. Of course, uh, uh, it does not uh, really um, prove that uh, you can really 
um, consider uh, that all the states which have a certain energy will have the same probability. It's because it might be that uh, states with different energy, uh, because the, the dynamics does not visit uh, all the states uh, with, uh, uh, with that energy. Okay? So, so in general, so the, the, uh, if this is your phase space, then there will be a, so the, the states with a given energy will be a, say, be a surface in this, uh, in this space, okay? But uh, this surface uh, might be disconnected, okay? So if you start uh, from your system uh, on one particular part, you may never visit uh, this other part, okay? So uh, in this sense, uh, the dynamic, what the dynamics will do is to, have a, uh, to sample uniformly all the states here and never sample the states here, okay? And um, so what is the uh, surface? So, it's, so imagine that you really have a, an ideal gas, okay? So in the ideal gas, uh, we have, uh, uh, well, the Hamiltonian is just... Uh, sum over i from 1 to 3n, p squared over 2n, okay? What is the trajectory of uh, the system uh, of, uh, in phase space of, this, uh, of the ideal gas? Huh? It's a sphere. So imagine that uh, your system is, uh, your ideal gas at a certain point uh, is here, in this point. Where will it move? Now we need the energy to be constant, right? Yes. So? No, no, I mean, uh, just uh, take... Uh, this, uh, this equation here. Okay, so the equations are uh, that Q dot I is equal to uh, minus, uh, is equal to P, uh, P I divided by M, right, usual uh, thing, and um, so, uh, and uh, P, I dot is equal to zero. So, um, so as far as the P is concerned, the point does not move at all. Does not move at all uh, in this direction. Actually, you have to consider the real gas. The real gas is in a box, okay? So if, the, if there is a particle which moves uh, with a certain momentum p, it will hit, the, bo uh, hit uh, the, the wall and then go back, okay? So uh, actually, so if your system is in this point here, then uh, uh, with a certain momentum p, uh, then uh, it will jump uh, to a point which is down here. Okay, and actually, uh, uh, what you what you have is that uh, when it is here, uh, it will uh, move with negative velocity, so it will follow a trajectory which is uh, uh, sorry, which is essentially like this. Okay. This is just for one particle, okay? For one particle, uh, you will go from uh, 
imagine that this particle is moving uh, horizontally and this is L, uh, it will go from uh, minus L over 2 to L over 2. Okay. So uh, this is the phase space of one particle, in case of one particle which is uh, uh, sampled by uh, your system. And, um, and the system will just jump from here to here, okay? And then uh, if you imagine you take another particle, uh, then, uh, well, it will uh, go on another uh, uh, point. But this system will not sample uh, the space of all possible uh, momenta and coordinates which are accessible, okay? In general, I mean. So you, you need to, uh, in particular, say, you can think of a system where all the, all the particles move uh, uh, just horizontally, the back and forth, uh, it will have a, a certain energy and, um, and it will just uh, continue staying in this state uh, without exploring uh, anything else. So, I mean, these, uh, these are hypotheses that uh, you visit uh, all the states which are consistent with a certain energy. Uh, it's really an important hypothesis. It's called the ergodic hypothesis, okay? And in the case of a gas, I mean, this is, uh, this is interesting uh, because uh, what you really need uh, is that uh, uh, the motion of this particle is somewhat uh, disordered, okay? So already if you take one particle, well, if you take one particle which is exactly moving horizontally, then it will do like this, okay? But if you take one particle which is moving uh, with a certain angle, then uh, at least uh, uh, you can think uh, that then it will bunch. And, uh, so it will explore the whole uh, uh, volume. And uh, maybe if you look at the coordinates of the system, uh, uh, the momenta of the system along the two axes, uh, so the, the, it will also explore the, the whole. Uh, P space, okay? If you think uh, at more uh, particles, then uh, uh, you, you have to uh, assume that particles will also, also collide one with the other. And when they will collide elastically, the energy will be conserved and they exchange momenta. And so, uh, so indeed, the, the motion of the um, uh, of the point in phase space uh, will be very, very complicated. In, in the case of, uh, say, of uh, is elastic collision, trajectories will not be continuous, okay? Because you always jump from a state uh, with a certain momentum to a state with a different momentum, right? So the, the motion is, uh, uh, is a bit different and, uh, and the fact that uh, you really sample uh, all the states with a given energy is, uh, is, un is non-trivial, okay? But uh, we will assume that. We will uh, assume that uh, this is true. And uh, so <coughs> this is called the ergodic hypothesis. So let me write it down just... Uh, The ergodic hypothesis uh, states that uh, all states with H, Q, E, to E are visited. So there are cases where, uh, uh, and it's very difficult to, to show that uh, this hypothesis is uh, verified in a specific system. And uh, there are cases where uh, essentially um, uh, physics 
is very in, is in very good agreement uh, with this uh, hypothesis. Uh, there are cases uh, where uh, instead uh, the, the fact that uh, um, uh, this hypothesis does not hold uh, is really physically important, uh, and this is the case of phase transitions. In phase transition, what you have is that uh, uh, your phase space uh, gets broken into different parts, uh, which are related by symmetry. So the simple case is a magnet. A magnet can be magnetized either in one direction or in the other. And uh, if it is magnetized in one direction, it will stay magnetized in that direction. It means that even though there are states with the same energy with the other di direction of the magnetization, the system will never visit those states. Okay? So uh, this is a case uh, where uh, the ergodic hypothesis clearly does not hold. And that is what uh, one calls uh, ergodicity breaking, in the sense that uh, the fact that uh, this uh, hypothesis does not hold is a breakdown of this ergodicity hypothesis, uh, which is uh, that all states with the same energy are uh, visited. Okay. So this is a good uh, place to stop. And uh, I hope you have uh, received the lecture notes. Did you? Okay. Um, Questions? So, what is the ergodic limit? What is the ergodic limit? So the ergodic, uh, uh, I don't know what is the ergodic limit, but uh, the ergodic hypothesis is what I wrote here. So uh, no, let's say uh, what, uh, what I've been saying is that uh, uh, what we will do in the following is to work uh, as if this hypothesis uh, is satisfied, OK? In the sense that uh, uh, we will do this uh, next time, what uh, from uh, <coughs> this equation, this t uh, you see, this equation tells you that uh, uh, all the states which are visited and which have uh, 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 all the states which are visited have the same uh, uh, density, okay? And we know that all the states which are visited uh, have the same energy, okay? But it is not true that all the states which have the same energy are visited. You see? There might be states with the same energy which are not visited by the system, okay? And then uh, when we when we take averages over these, uh, uh, assuming uh, that all states with the same energy are visited, uh, we will get a result which is different from when we do time averages. Okay? So, so all the states which are visited uh, have the same density if the energy is constant, okay? And of all the states which are visited have the same energy, okay? But it is not true that all the states with the same energy are visited. There might be some state in my plot here. If uh, the state with a certain energy, sorry, is disconnected, for example, there are uh, two, uh, if you look at uh, uh, the points in the phase space where this is true, there are, for example, two surfaces. 
then uh, uh, and um, if you start uh, with your point here, then you are uh, uh, you will get stuck here. And if you start with your point here, you will get stuck here. If you do time averages, you will get a different uh, uh, result if you are here or if you are here. Okay, take the example of a magnet. Okay, the example of a ferromagnet polarized uh, 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 is when. When it is uh, um, uh, uh, when you have a ferromagnet uh, uh, with a um, magnetic moment in one direction, you are only sampling states uh, with with the magnetic moment in, in that direction, right? But there are other states uh, with the magnetic moment in the opposite direction, in another direction, which have the same energy. You're never going to visit those states. Okay. So if you take uh, these, uh, if you take the hypothesis that uh, the uh, uh, whenever two states have the same uh, energy, they have the same uh, uh, density, then uh, uh, the, you are going to have a problem. Okay. This is the case where. These are the cases where this ergodic hypothesis does not hold. If you want, the ergodic hypothesis tells you that uh, uh, you know that all the states with the same, uh, which are visited have the same energy. The ergodic hypothesis tells you that the converse is also true. All the states with the same energy are visited. Okay. Cannot be. Uh, may, uh, you can have examples like uh, uh, the ferromagnet uh, where this is not true. Okay. So it's important to to uh, to be aware of this. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, the, we said that the number of uh, uh, points of the ensemble is proportional to the volume, right? And uh, so what is the question? Yes, this is a definition. It's a definition of the density. You define the density uh, as uh, the density of points, uh, the density of points of your ensemble in a particular point uh, QP as the frequency with which the system visits uh, that, uh, um, that point. Okay? Yes. Yes, this is not clear. It's not clear. So this is... Uh, So you just uh, write that while well, you want to do the limit as time goes to infinity of 1 over t integral t0, t0 plus t f of q of t, p of t. Now this is the time average, right? Now what I can do is to uh, write uh, this integral uh, in this form. This integral in dq dp of uh, f of uh, q and p times the limit uh, as t goes to infinity of uh, uh, 1 over t times uh, the integral uh, dt t0 and t0 plus t. And here what I do is uh, I put uh, uh, a function which gives me 1 whenever uh, p of t is equal to p and uh, q of t is equal to q. Okay, so this is, uh, 
the delta function, okay? Is a, uh, is a 3n dimensional delta function, okay? So this is uh, precisely, uh, well, what I'm doing here is, is, is for densities, okay? So, so if you do it for a, a small volume, uh, then uh, this will be the indicator function of, of the volume, okay? But uh, this is precisely what I uh, describe by this, uh, if you want, uh, uh, dw of t divided by uh, dq dp, okay? So the, the frequency with which uh, I visit uh, the point uh, QP, okay? Is this clear? Is this a bit more clear than before? So, um, in order to uh, do this integral, what I can do is to say, uh, I compute the fraction. This is uh, essentially uh, how frequently I visit the point uh, Q and P. This is an integral which essentially gives me one whenever uh, I'm in uh, Q and in P, okay? So this is uh, the fraction of time that I am in Q and P. And then uh, I uh, average this over all possible values of Q and P. So and this is uh, my definition of rho of Q and P, okay? So it's just, uh, uh, I sit on each point Q and P and I compute the frequency with which uh, the system passes by, okay? And uh, this is uh, um, uh, this is the way uh, with which you go from one to the other. Is it more clear now? So uh, um, uh, there is another thing I wanted to tell you. I mean, uh, geometrically, what uh, <coughs> just a moment. Uh, one, uh, what this tells you is that uh, if you follow a system, a trajectory, then the density will be constant. So this tells you that uh, uh, the, the, the trajectories uh, of the system, if you take two systems and they follow two trajectories, these trajectories will never coalesce. So trajectories uh, uh, will never uh, uh, coalesce because if they did, then the density would increase. Okay? So this means the trajectories... Uh, do not coalesce, okay? So they always stay uh, separated, okay? A question, there was another question? Sorry? Is this one related to doing an experiment on, on, on one system for a long time, but doing on many systems? Yes, so I want to define this ensemble, a set of many, many systems, such that when I, may, when I average over these many systems, over this ensemble, I get the same result as if I average over one system over time. You see? So these ensembles are defined precisely in this way. Okay? And the, the whole thing is that you turn the problem of uh, having to solve uh, all the differential equations into the problem of having to compute uh, just a density function. Okay, 
No, and uh, so is this clear? The, the the concept of ensembles. I mean, you you can think of uh, say uh, a physical uh, uh, way of thinking of this ensemble is you have your system which moves in phase space, and every three years you take a point. You wait. Uh, 5,000 years and you have a collection of points, okay? And uh, so you, you, you take a point every time interval delta t, okay? If you do this, uh, you follow just one system, at the end you will get a collection of points. This is an ensemble. Then you can think of, uh, let's follow this uh, system uh, uh, in time, and, uh, uh, and let's see how this cloud of points in the phase space moves. And this cloud of points is described by this uh, as a density, which should be described by this uh, this uh, function here, this density function. Okay. Uh, so is this clear that if you Construct the ensemble in this way, then uh, time averages are the same as uh, averages over the ensemble. Huh? Yes. So this is the way you, in which you construct uh, this ensemble. So you take one system and uh, you pick one copy of your system every, say, uh, Every day, for example, no. And then uh, you look for an infinite number of days. You will have an infinite number of copies of your system. Imagine that uh, the system is always in the same uh, conditions of uh, energy, number of particles, and volume. Okay. And then uh, it is clear that uh, now, if you average over these points, it will be the same as averaging over time, right? Okay. Yeah. Is there any other contradiction between time average and uh, ensemble average? Uh, no, this is uh, this is the only problem, no, which you can have. The problem is that uh, not all uh, the points with the same energy are visited, no? So the dynamics does not access all the points. Uh, otherwise, uh, otherwise, uh, if it, if the hypothesis is true, then uh, this Newville theorem tells you that all the points are uh, visited equiprobably, with the same probability. So you have a, uh, a, a, I mean, a reason to really uh, believe that this equiprobable assumption is, is, is right. Okay, so see you on uh, Monday.